You, Juan Antonio Williams. I, Juan Antonio Williams. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That you will execute this interview faithfully. Wait, I lost it up. Wait a minute. That's not what you're supposed to say. Uh, welcome to uh, Open Mic with Juan Williams. Let's sit down. We won't, com we won't complete that oath. And uh, it, it was noticed immediately that the Chief Justice, who had never given the oath of office before to a president of the United States, uh, he, he bungled it, right? He did. And what's funny about it is he's such a precise person. He's a man of the law and the letter. So I'm surprised that he didn't have like a cheat sheet with him to make sure that he got it right. I guess he thought he had it memorized. But yes, he did. He, uh, uh, on President Obama's first day in office, of course, the Chief Justice uh, came over and brought his robe along, or maybe always carries it under his arm, and readministered the oath for what the White House called an abundance of caution. W was it necessary, or were they doing it for, for other reasons? Was it legally necessary? I don't think it was legally necessary. I guess it was a matter of being uncertain whether or not the law would require it. So Greg Craig, the White House counsel, in conversation with Chief Justice Roberts, decided, you know what, we'll eliminate any question and we'll have a redo. So they came back and at the White House with Roberts in his full robes, readministered the oath. Now, this strikes me as odd. Were they really worried about some bloggers out there mm -hmm. who with nothing else to do, who were kind of seeking to be petty and catty and undermine Obama? Or did they think there was a legal issue? Because Obama never did quite say the words as they are written yeah. in the Constitution. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, he signed some executive orders before he was ever readministered the oath. Now, is anyone, are the bloggers or anybody else going to challenge that? I don't know. Well, of course, they want to challenge where he was born, and they don't believe he's an American, and this can go on and on. But to me, it was such small, such small stuff. I didn't understand why I even bothered to make the effort. There was no serious effort to say that Barack Obama was not president of the United States because the Chief Justice got faithfully in the wrong place. Uh, and of course it was revealed this week that the music played by Yo-Yo Ma and Itzhak Perlman, and uh, that, that, that was pre-recorded. So that was, that was just performance. That was lip syncing, isn't it, what we saw? <laughs> yeah, that was Milli Vanilli. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bo but, bow sinking, whatever. Uh, yeah, well, you know, again, what was funny to me was having uh, seen all the uproar about the Olympics where the Chinese had one young woman singing to another young woman's voice. Well, this was, you know, equally egregious, but here it was said, oh, it was too cold. Could, violin string could have snapped. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? A lot of this is just performance, and yeah. it's a presentation, and accept it as such. I mean, you know, I suppose it occurs to me now, if you're going to play pre-recorded pre music, you, you could have had Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid <laughs> play the cello and the violin. <laughs> now, that would have been a scene. Yeah, I think that would have been terrific, <laughs> except one of them might have hit the other over the head with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we, we might uh, talk about some of that next week. Uh, thanks, Juan Williams. And listen, we want to hear from you. Uh, do you think that President Obama should have taken the oath again? Let, let's hear from you. Or was it, was it catering to small minds out there? We'd like to hear from you on our soapbox. So, Juan, see you next week. On open mic, I'll be back.